Hey road trippers, we're here at Great Plains State Park in Oklahoma, and I just wanted to share with you this weekend's astrophotography experience using the Pixel 6 and Allison's Nikon D750. It's fantastic as we pretty much have this entire park to ourselves. There are only a couple of people off in the distance, so we were able to really make use of all the space around us. This is a Bortle 3 sky, so you should expect some pretty dark skies here. Next weekend, we're headed over to Copper Break State Park, and that's classified as a dark sky park, and that's a Bortle 2 sky. So the night before last, it was way too windy. Gusts were over 30 miles an hour. Use this little mini tripod, and it just, it just kept blowing over. It was just way too windy. Switched over to try to use some wood. I leaned it up against the wood as well. And there must have been some micro vibrations. Uh, the pixel wouldn't register from night sight mode into astro mode. So I couldn't get shots that first night really, except for one, I believe. So this was the uh, first image that I got. Pretty much had to set the camera on the ground to get the shot. It was just way too windy. And those micro vibrations were causing it to not hit astro mode. I just was in night sight mode. Allison and I drove in late. Uh, we left the Dallas area around eight o'clock and got in here around midnight. We decided to stay up and shoot Leonard. We knew we were gonna be able to see it sometime after 2.30, um, between 2.30 to sunrise. So we stayed up for a couple of hours to try to shoot it. It was unbelievably cold. The wind coming off the lake water was just unbearable, um, but we tolerated it for as long as we could. Moving on to the second night, there was a ton of fog, which made for some really moody, kind of neat looking shots, I thought. Since it is early December, there's a lot of dead trees. So you can see what I did focus on for my subject. I kind of like this shot. There's a lot of kind of fog in the background right on the lake. It gives it a little bit of a kind of a mood. This one I really love. You can see there's a nice glow in the background. Now this yellow kind of street light illuminating it. Looks like there's little rays coming off of the camper. Focusing on again with dead trees, uh, the lights in the background from that tower, they kind of illuminated the back, kind of gave it an interesting little glow. There's another dead tree right on the lake. Uh, you can see a couple of different colored lights in the background from a little town way off in the distance. Did a couple of tests without any background lighting. Uh, this is just the picnic table. Eh, it's interesting, it's okay. A few straight clouds started coming through. You can see light from this light pole to the side. Stars came out pretty nice, I think. You could see a couple of constellations up there. Then we have this one, which has some scattered clouds up in the sky. So shooting from the road in the general direction of the Comet Leonard, Comet Leonard, was rising in the left hand side of the image uh, when we started shooting in this general direction you could see what some clouds look like lightly off in the distance these next two images show you what it looks like with some intense lighting the first one has a, a light pole and the next one is a restroom kind of hard to see the stars but if you are somewhere and you want to shoot some lights in the foreground you still can capture some stars in the background it will take a really short time-lapse video, so that's a pretty cool feature, one to one and a half seconds or so. Um, and that's pretty neat if you wanna stitch them all together. The light's gonna shift quite a bit. I'm gonna test that out next weekend. Um, from what I've seen, it's uh, kind of a little bit all over the place. All right, so in this picture, Leonard is somewhere. Uh, you can see the Big Dipper, you can see Arcturus, and then Bootes or Booties. Leonard is just a little itty bitty speck or smudge in this image. Um, Allison's going to show you what she got on her Nikon D750. So we uh, um, attempted to shoot the Comet Leonard this weekend. And after seeing what the cameras picked up, if you remember Neowise from last year, there's just no comparison. Neowise was much brighter. Uh, much more significant in the sky and Leonard um, I believe at least what I've seen is you need longer lens and longer exposure times uh, star tracker to help pick up that extra light or um, shooting through a telescope 
I shot with um, this Nikon D750 and I shot with my my Nikon D7000 and I found that when I used the shorter focal length I just couldn't see the comet at all. It wasn't until I got up in the 100 to 200 millimeter range that I actually saw the smudge and I was able to pick up some of that green core that you often see in the comets. I did not have a star tracker so I had to do single exposures so I know that my images probably have a ton of noise that I just won't be able to eliminate. So we were able to see Comet Leonard in the early morning hours around 3 a.m. in the north eastern sky, I want to say. Um, I'm not really sure if the magnitude is expected to change drastically. Definitely going to give it a try and hopefully see some improvement. But... Probably not. <laughs> All right, road trippers. That's our experience shooting Comet Leonard and shooting astrophotography with a Pixel 6. Hopefully you join us next week as we try to shoot Copper Breaks State Park and Leonard is a little bit closer and a little bit brighter. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.